presenting Orson Welles as the third man. The Lives of Harry Lyme. The fabulous stories of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man. With zither music by Anton Kara. That was the shot that killed Harry Lyme. He died in a sewer beneath Vienna. As those of you know who saw the movie The Third Man. Yes, that was the end of Harry Lyme. But it was not the beginning. Harry Lyme had many lives. And I can recount all of them. How do I know? It's very simple. Because my name is Harry Lyme. I've known many places and left them. Made many friends and lost them. Won many fortunes and spent them. My fate seems to be linked to a cosmic yo-yo. This is a story of a low point on one of the yo-yo trips down. This particular low point is known on the map as the island of Haiti. I arrived there as a sort of political refugee, a small revolution I'd been promoting in a nearby banana republic. It fizzled out on me, and the general I'd been backing backed out, and I found myself holding the bag. The bag, luckily, just happened to contain a few rolls of the U.S. Treasury's best lettuce, so when I descended on Haiti, I did it with style. Then, after a while, I spent the style. Don't let anybody tell you about the easy life on these tropical islands. You need dough in paradise, too. Of course, I still had my friends among the natives, but even they had become devoted students of the Rubaiyat. That is, they took the cash and let the credit go. Now, Orson Welles is Harry Lyme, the third man in Voodoo. I am sorry, Monsieur Harry, no more. Oh, come on now, Georges. You've got a clean white cuff there, even for a bartender. Monsieur Harry, please understand. My boss, he supply my cuff. <laughs> I cannot mark it up any further. Georges, are you trying to tell me that money makes that much difference to you? Do you prefer that sort of customer to me, that, that ambassador of ill will over there? The Babbitt who comes to Haiti to find somebody new in Toledo? Or do you prefer... Monsieur Harry, I prefer you. Oh, merci, old Every man. Every native I... on this island prefers Monsieur Harry. Well, then it's settled, huh? But the boss, he prefers his customer with the money. Oh, I should have known. Somehow, Georges, it never occurred to me that you'd sell out like the rest, go commercial. But, well, you, you've been trapped too, Georges, cornered, impaled on the almighty dollar side. No, 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 mon ami, I... Well, mean... Georges, it's getting late. Time for me to move on, I guess. That's your greatest fault, Harry Lyon. Always moving on. Hmm? More? And it's always getting so late. Dorna. <laughs> Hello, Harry, darling. Dorna, you beautiful, wonderful witch. Oh. What are you doing? Uh-uh. Let's not be trite, Harry. I could ask you the same question. Okay, then. Whom are you doing here? <laughs> Harry, darling. Three years haven't changed you a bit. Well, who is he? That one? No, no. Over there. The seer sucker suit. Oh, no, Dorna. Oh, he's really quite charming, Harry. Charming, huh? He's an oaf. I don't like the way he laughs. Oh, you'd adore him, darling. <laughs> he pinches waitresses, collects souvenirs, collects money, too. Ah, I might have known. He's with you. <laughs> well, let's meet him. Uh, now, Harry. After you, mademoiselle. Oh, and, uh, Georges, you might tell your boss that Harry Lyme is on the preferred list again. I spent several pleasant moments following Dorna to the booth as she snaked her way adroitly between the tables. It was difficult for me to focus my attention on her. Mark. The mark in this case was fat and perspiring. Of course, he was bald. His contributions to the aromas of the cafe were generous. His cigars, perspiration, and his money. Sam? Huh? Oh, hiya, baby. 
I was just going to send out a searching party for you. <laughs> Sam, I'd like you to meet an old friend of mine, huh? Harry Lyme, Sam Torkin. Oh, very happy to meet you, Mr. Torkin. Oh, sit down, sit down. Any friend of Dora's is a friend of mine. Well, within reason, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. Uh, you from the States, too, Larry? Uh, Harry, Sam. Harry Lyme. Huh? Oh, yeah, Harry. Yeah, what part of the States are you from? I'm from Toledo. Toledo. Yeah. Eh? One of my plants is in Toledo. <laughs> a drink. Here, have a drink. Waiter, bring my friend a drink. Eh? <laughs> Toledo, eh? <laughs> great little town. Yes, Toledo. sir. <laughs> of course, to me, any town's a great town as long as business is good. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm. this is my first vacation in 18 years. 18 years. Can you imagine that? <laughs> He gabbled. For eternities, he gabbled. Dorna was obviously amused by my boredom, but my patience has always had a price. Torkin kept gabbling till I almost considered reducing that price, and then he gave me my cue. Uh, sure is hot in these parts. Well, baby, come on. Let's go out of this dump and find some souvenirs. Oh, Sam, not again. Now, what sort of souvenirs are you looking for, Mr. Torkin? Hmm? Oh, I don't know. The souvenirs are... Well, uh, souvenirs, ain't they? Now, come on, beautiful. Let's... Uh, souvenirs can be more than souvenirs, Mr. Torkin. No, Lime, what kind of talk is now, that? Now, 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 look, Mr. Torkin, you're a man of taste and means. Hey, a sales pitch. <laughs> hey, what are you selling, Lime? Yes, Harry, what are you selling? Uh, well, selling, I'm, I'm selling nothing, nothing but plain, ordinary common sense. It's at a premium on this island, Mr. Torkin. Yeah? I'll let him no, no. finish, Let me tell you about Hazy, both of you. This island is steeped in sediment. Not our kind, not the least trim sort of thing. Sediment here is a wild, untamed, primitive love, a sense of possession that defies the laws of man and nature. Now, listen to those drums, Torkin. Listen. They're telling you the secrets of Haiti. Huh? Do you understand them, Harry? As much as any civilized man is permitted to. Well, that's, that's that voodoo stuff, ain't it? Well, they're not stuff, Torque. Those drums are calling to the voodoo gods to smile upon the wedding of a native man and his beloved. The wedding nights are just beginning. They'll continue till dawn. It's the wedding of Fancy and Grigri. Who? Fancy works as a waiter in a hotel here in town. His father got in a jam once with a planter, and I just happened to save his neck. That counts for something here in Haiti. Oh, that reminds me. If you'll excuse me. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to the wedding. You're going up there? Oh, take us with you. Oh, I wish I could, Dorna, but, well, I... Hey, 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 wait a minute now. Sit down, sit down. Now, what about all this uh, sentiment and souvenirs and all? Well, all right. Look. Haiti is crawling with priceless relics. Anthropological prizes, historical symbols. They bring fantastic prices from any museum in the States. Oh, where do they sell them? Well, they're not selling them, Torka. You've got to know the island. You've got to know the people to find them. Oh, well, how come they're worth so much? Sentiment, old man, sentiment. The voodoo brand. The natives protect their sacred symbols with their lives. And, of course, they're, they're the raw materials. Huh? Little sentimental trinkets, diamonds, rubies, sapphires, miscellaneous baubles. The kind of sentiment we understand. Oh, I love souvenirs like that. Oh, uh -huh. Well, okay, Lime. I guess you can get me one of them baubles. Yes, that's possible. Now, what's your deal? Well, first let me find a suitable trinket. Time enough then to bargain. For now, Mr. Torkin, a small retainer will do. Huh? Mm. Oh, uh, yeah, well, uh, how much? Oh, as you wish, as you wish. But uh, as those drums would tell you, sentiment comes high in Haiti. <laughs> I had a feeling that Dorna would keep Sam talking well occupied for the present. The future, of course, I'd handle in my own way. And in the meantime, there's nothing to worry about except keeping a date with two old friends. I found my friends in the film. I found Sam the head of the ceremony of in a place of honor. as befitted them. Ah, uh, Monsieur Ari. We don't think you ever come. Oh, I wouldn't have missed it, Fancy. You and Grigri are my favorite people. Oh, thank you. You are kind. You say that so often, Grigri. I must believe it. Seriously, I wish you both much happiness. Merci. Merci. We will be happy always when we have friends like Ari Lyme. You have done so much for us. Our family. We cannot forget you. Fancy, old man. You go far with a wife like this. She says all the right things. It is the time. Oh, no, the marriage ceremony? Oh, no, no. We are married already. It is the moment to pledge ourselves to the authority. Authority? It is a tribal custom. Fancy. Please, Ari, these are tribal secrets. Oh, you don't trust your old friend with secrets? We can trust no one with this secret. Fancy. Fancy, what's happening? What's that? It is the authority. The scepter. The sacred scepter of all the crystal. 
the scepter of Henri Cristo. Well, here was the souvenir for talking. <laughs> All right, Lime. All right, all right. Who is this Henri no, Christophe? talking. You mean to say you never heard of him? Nah. Christophe was... Well, he was the, the, the George Washington of Haiti. Oh, every two-bit country's got its own Washington. Get me Washington's scepter and I'm interested. Listen, listen, old man. Christophe started life as a slave. He became Haiti's most powerful ruler. At one point in his regime, talking, he stood off the combined armies of France and England with 2,000 men. On the north end of this island, old man, up near Le Carpe. Huh? The cop, Cap uh, Tien. Tremendous fortress high on the hill above the jungle. You've seen it, haven't you? Well, how could I miss it? It's big enough. One of the biggest. Washington didn't build that, Torkin. Christoph did. So what? He didn't just order it, Bill. He planned it, designed it, supervised the work, dug rocks out of the mountains with his bare hands. You're a self-made man, Torkin. That ought to appeal to you. What about the scepter line? Look, old man. Henri Christoph is a landlocked saint to these people, an all-powerful earth god. While he lived, his scepter was his symbol of strength and wealth. Being king in those days was a profitable business, old man. Christophe had more jewels in that scepter than Dorna has curves. And there was a revolt here in Haiti, and Christophe was found dead, but the scepter was gone. For over a hundred years, its whereabouts have been kept secret. I know the secret, Torkin. I can get it for you. Yeah? How? It's my business. Your business is to make it worth my while. Okay, Lime. How much this time? Oh, plenty, old man. Fancy. Fancy, where are you? Oh, oh Gregory. Enter, Ari. Oh, you are welcome in the house of Fancy and Gregory. My friend, Ari, ah, it is Fancy, good. Fancy, I've been looking for you. I've got to talk to you. Oh, we are always eager to listen. Fancy, it's, it's that scepter. Scepter of all. Oh. oh. What's the matter? Oh, Ari, please, you must not ask. These are secrets of our people. But I've always considered myself one of your people, Gregor. My friend, Ari, I, I have told you too much already. Please do not think any more of the scepter. It is forbidden to speak of it. Forbidden among friends? Ari, with the scepter, it is different. It is the authority. Is it? It is. It is the scepter of Henri Christophe. It is passed down from high priest to high priest. It is never out of their hands. It is the authority. Oh, that is enough to know. Please, ask no more. Gregory, would I ask if it weren't important? No, Ari, please. I've got to know more about it, Gregory. Fancy, you understand, don't you? Gregory... Oh, don't make him say more, Ari, please. Don't make him say more. Please, please. Come in. Fancy. Come in, old man. Come in. Ari, you do not mind that I come here? Oh, of course not. Any time. What's the trouble? I do not know. It is not my trouble. Eh? When you are at my house today, I see you have great trouble. I try to tell Grigri, but she do not understand. Trouble? Me? No, no, no. Wait a minute. I am telling her you are, must have great trouble or you would not ask for tribal secrets. Oh, well... It is all right, Ari. You are my friend. When you are in trouble, I help you. Oh, well... Well, good. That's the spirit, old man. You have done much for me and Grigri. This is for you. Oh? It is the scepter of Henri Christophe. It's... Fancy. It is yours. I could do no less. Fancy. It's... Now... It's... <laughs> you will have no more trouble, Ari. Well, now, wait a minute. Well, what about you? How did you get this thing, anyway? It is no matter. You stole it from the high priest. What if they find out you took it? They won't go to the police. No. They won't put you in jail? No. Well, what will they do? They will not put me in jail. They will not go to the police. The priest will be my judge. Fancy. What will they do? They will punish me. I will die. Orson Welles returns in just a moment as the third man.
Orson Welles as the third man continues with Voodoo. Had I known a man like Francie earlier in my life, my ideas about all men might just possibly be a little different today. Here was the truest kind of friend. True in the real sense of the word true. He was staking his life, literally, staking his life on his faith in <laughs> Harry Lyme. If I rejected his offer of the sacred scepter, I'd have shattered his faith in me. And fancy lived by his faith in his friends. And I did need the scepter. As for friends, well, there are many kinds of friendship. Harry. Hmm. Uh. Tell the truth. Hmm? Oh, sure. Dora, my love, you're ravishing. Oh, no. Not that. About the scepter. Oh, no. hmm. Got a cigarette? Mm-hmm. Here. Thanks. Is it really the scepter of Henri Cristo? Mm -hmm. Think Sam will buy it? Why not? Why is it so valuable? Historical significance, cluster of rubies, big fat sapphire in the middle. Harry. Mm -hmm. What's it really worth? Oh, 20,000, maybe 25. Move the ashtray over. Hmm? <laughs> Bet Talkin would give me 35,000 for it. Think so? Mm hmm. I'm prettier than you. <laughs> right. But I have Christoph's scepter. Oh, but darling, if you let me peddle it to Tokyo... Go on, then, my sweet. I lost you three years ago in Madagascar. The scepter might be a temptation if you leave me again. Oh, no. <laughs> Never no, mind that Harry. stuff. Never mind that stuff. Wouldn't 35,000 hmm. be nicer than 25? Mm-hmm. Then why don't you let me Go on, have the it? The fact is, I don't have a scepter. What? <laughs> Talking bought it this morning. Fifty thousand dollars. Harry, you <laughs> you <laughs> That's why you lost me in Madagascar. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Guess I've got to work on talking again. <laughs> Good old Sam. Yeah. Good old Sam. <laughs> Somehow, good old Sam ran a bad second. Dorna was no fool. She wasn't greedy. I was available, and I had money. Not as much as talking, of course, but enough to keep her satisfied temporarily. We decided on a small celebration of sort that requires noisy public demonstrations with champagne bottles. We went to a little cafe, and I rather enjoyed the impression I was making, particularly on Georges. Would you like me to put this on your bill, Monsieur? Oh, certainly not, Georges. Certainly not. I wouldn't want to cause any undue strain or suffering for your employer. But, Monsieur... Never mind, Georges, old man. Here, this should cover the situation, I think. Oh, here, here's a little something for you. Thank you, Monsieur. You are... All of What's the matter? You will excuse me, Mr. Ray. I must go. Eh? I'm sorry, I must close the bar. Close the bar at this time of night? Just a minute. The drums, Monsieur Ray, you understand? The drums. The drums? What? Uh, George. It's the death drums. I do not have to tell you, Monsieur Ray. Why? What for? I don't know. You will excuse me. Harry, what is it? I don't know. Those are, those are the death drums. They mean someone's dead or dying. Or going to die. Going to die? Who? I don't know. I don't know. I have a hunch. I hope I'm wrong. Harry! Wait! Where are you going? Harry! Harry! got to the ceremonial grounds, I saw a frenzied sight, hundreds of natives, still dressed in the tattered dungarees of the cane fields, dancing, shrieking, half-hypnotized, and the drums. They were the drums of death, all right, no mistaking it. As I crashed through the brush surrounding the clearing, I saw that they'd already, already taken a life. 
There was a body, a dead body, strapped to a post in the center of the circle. Sam talking. The voodoo priest danced up and back in front of it, waving curses over it, screaming through the slits in a hideous mask. And in his hand, he held the scepter of Marie Christoph. A scepter that had cost Torkin more than he'd bargained for. I'd had enough. I turned to leave. And then at the far end of the clearing, I saw something else. Two more bodies tied together, back to back, hanging by their wrists from a long cross pole strung between two trees. The two of them together, Fancy and Grigory, ready to be sacrificed. No! No, wait, stop! Stop it, I tell you! Listen, all of you, listen, listen to me! You're making a mistake. You're torturing. You're torturing two innocent people. You can't do it. They are wrongers. It was forbidden. They must be punished. No. They will die. Well, they, they can't die. You're punishing them for something they didn't do. You think they sold the scepter to this man, but they didn't. I, I did. I made Fancy tell me about it. I'm the one you want. Listen to me. You've got to believe me. Harry Lime would not cause their death. Harry Lime is their friend. But I tell you, it isn't my deal. And I'm the guy you want. So untie these ropes. Come on, move, or there'll be a new voodoo priest holding forth at your funeral. It's no use, Harry Lime. If you kill me, others will take the revenge. It's no use to kill these two, either. Okay. Grigri, you're loose. Help untie Fancy. Okay, I'll do it myself. Hold still, Fancy. There, you're loose. All right, come on. Come on, I'll get you two out of this. Harry, it is too late. You must go. Now, come on, I'll help you. Now run for it. Stay back, you lunatics, or I'll start knocking off voodoo. I want you now. Stay back. That's better. Come on, Fancy. Grigri, get going. There goes Haiti, Dorna. Another corner of the world, chipped off. You over back, Harry? No. Fancy and Grigri are going to Cuba. And time people learn the truth about me. Uh -uh. Haiti's through with Harry Lyme. You're really taking this seriously, aren't you? Mm, not to my fashion. Not to my fashion. Guess I messed up your meal ticket, too, didn't I? Sam talking? Poor Sam. Don't worry, Harry. You'll take care of me. Until the 50,000 is gone. Well? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Well, let's have a drink. returns in just a moment. saying that wasn't Harry Lyme at all. You're saying the noble hero that pulled off that fancy rescue party wasn't the third man. He was a couple of other guys. Just goes to show how I misjudged. Well, ask Fancy and Grigory, now happily keeping house in a suburb of Havana. They'll tell you it really was Harry Lyme that got them out of that whole voodoo mess. Of course, they'll also remind you that I got them into it. 
And they might possibly mention that as the three of us dashed off into the jungle, I paused just long enough to borrow that scepter back from the high priest. Got a nice price for it, too, from a collector in Brussels. But that's another story. So long now, and if anybody should run into Dorna anywhere, in Timbuktu, for example, or the store club, give her my love. Remind her she owes me about 15,000 hard-earned American bucks, which seem to have slipped out of a hole in my pocket or something. No hard feelings, of course, but if you get a choice between voodoo, hoodoo, and little Dorna, I hope you'll know what to do about it. Take the voodoo every time. (laughs) 